back the stone and then sat on it. Shafts of light blazed from him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah, he is risen today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah, he is risen today. According to the Gospel of Mark, he said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, the one they nailed on the cross. He's been raised up, he's here no longer. You can see for yourself that the place is empty. Now on your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah, he is risen today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah, he is risen today. According to the Gospel of John, Jesus said, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen, hallelujah, he is risen today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen, hallelujah, he is risen today. Welcome to worship here at Ridgefield Crystal Lake Presbyterian Church. Welcome to you both here in the sanctuary and to you joining us online this morning. My name is Pastor Nicole Malara, serving as interim pastor here at Ricklepick and glad to be with you celebrating this beautiful Easter morning. A few things as we begin our worship service together. Um, please take a moment to sign the red friendship pads that you'll find in your pews. Sign them and pass them along to your neighbors. It's a great way for us to know who's here today and if there are any pastoral needs in the congregation. I would like to take a moment today and express uh, some deep gratitude to those who made this holy week here at Ricklepick something special. To all of those who contributed their time and their talents to our cantata and our brunch last Sunday, the special mission projects that we had going through the Lenten season, to our communion setters and soup makers, and our worship enhancement team for creating a meaningful and beautiful space for us to worship in. What a beautiful blessing it is to share this ministry with you. Thank you. As you know, in this Lenten season, we've been looking at the seven marks of vital congregations, and this Sunday, we reach the final mark, intentional, authentic evangelism, which is pretty much at the heart of all of our Easter celebrations. I encourage you to read more about it in your bulletin this morning and put your ears on for the sermon. We're going to talk more about it. I'd like to invite up Kathy Rabe this morning to give us a talk uh, of announcement from Living Waters. In 2015, two couples from our church started learning about a project called Living Waters for the World. And those two couples, Jack and Sarah Kelway and Lois and Rick Johnson, went to some training seminars, some conferences to learn more about it, and they brought it back to us. And we have been supporting this project, watching it grow, 
and been amazed at what we have been able to do to help people in Guatemala to obtain clean water. So far, we have done five installations with one more coming here in April. And uh, we are so proud of what we've been able to accomplish to help these communities to be healthier and to maintain it themselves and be proud of their achievements, especially the children. Their health has increased tremendously. So how do we all help them when they're out doing this project? Well, we come to the Fiesta Agua Viva. We'll be having it here at church on Friday, uh, Saturday, the 13th of April from 4 to 7 in Fellowship Hall. You are all invited to come. There will be activities for the children, and there will be wonderful food, some great desserts, I've heard. And there will also be some entertainment from Anthony and his team. And the most important thing, though, is there's going to be some wonderful auction baskets that Amy Connell has put together. It's amazing, beautiful baskets. You're asked to bid on them. This helps us to financially support this team. Uh, a little known fact is the team pays their own way on airline flights to and from these projects. So this just goes to buying the materials needed and helping to install them. So I hope you will come and have fun with us. It's a wonderful afternoon. And if you want to see what the baskets look like, come down to Fellowship Hall after the service. There will be some refreshments, and you can see the beautiful baskets. And I hope you will invite your friends and your family and your neighbors to come. It will be a wonderful afternoon. So the 13th of April, I hope I see you all there. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I'm looking forward to it. Just seeing those baskets has been pretty amazing. <laughs> Finally, uh, just a word, we'll be celebrating communion later on in our worship. For those who are worshiping online with us, we trust the Holy Spirit to guide you to elements available to you there at home. Whatever works, the Holy Spirit will be present and bless it. For those who are visiting with us in the sanctuary this morning, please know that here at Ricklepick we practice open communion. And no matter what, if you would like to know Christ Jesus better, you are welcome at his table. Please do participate. It's a blessing to share this meal with you. And now please take a moment to turn on your awareness, to be alive and to come alive again on this resurrection morning and share in the spirit of God already alive and moving in us and through us in this holy place. And as you are able in body or in spirit, please rise and join with me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have done marvelous things. When we drew near feeling worthless, you were there. When we were needing forgiveness, you were there. But when we drew near to the tomb, you were already gone. You were already ahead of us, leading the way to new and eternal life. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Come, let us worship. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have done marvelous things. Our opening hymn is number 232, Jesus Christ has risen today.
Christ has risen, and we have risen to new life with him. Yet there are parts of us that continue to remain in tomes of sin and death, seeking to embrace and live the resurrection. Let us come before God and before one another in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Lord, when we stand before the empty tomb, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, Christ has forgiven our sins. Christ calls us to new life. Christ will lead us into righteousness. Alleluia. Amen. As a people restored and forgiven, let us share in Christ's peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share Christ's peace. above me and say peace to those at home.
Come on forward. Look at all of these wonderful smiling faces. Amelie is hiding. She's like, oh, you're good. You're old enough. <laughs> all right. Happy Easter, everybody. Anybody find an Easter basket this morning? No? Come on. You did. Raise your hand. <laughs> all right. So we're going to start today off by doing some magic. And every magician has a beautiful assistant, so... My wife is going to be helping out. All right. And then all, all you guys, you got to come here to learn the trick. So you're not going to hear what's happening. So come real close. Real So all the kids are going to stand right up here next to our communion table. And me and Allison aren't going to make them disappear. We have the magic comforter. Ready, set. Perfect. What do we say after magic tricks? Ta-da! Abracadabra. All right, we've got another one. This time, we're going to reveal what's inside the bucket. All right? So somebody who's, like, really magically proficient can come, I mean, like me, yes, but not me, can come and do their magic and then reveal what's inside. Who wants to have at it? Come on, buddy. Got to say like a spell or something, right? Abracadabra. <laughs> right. Now pull it away. Ta-da! What's in there? Lift it up for everybody. Empty. <laughs> so the reason it's empty is because today in the scripture, they roll away the stone to the tomb that Jesus was buried in. And what did they discover? It was empty, just like this. So in a magic trick, finding that the box is empty is disappointing, right? But in the Bible story that we hear today, finding that the tomb was empty is like the best news ever. Because what does that mean for us? Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. But this was like 2,000 years ago, so what does that mean today? That the magic doesn't work. Well, <laughs> Jesus is actually above magic, right? Is Jesus still with us today? Yeah. How? What, is, what did he give us? And the, is the Holy Spirit all around us all the time? Right. So is Jesus with us in this room? Yeah. Is Jesus going to be with us when we go home and celebrate with our families? Yeah. Right. So could we walk with Jesus as we go out and do things like um, collect coins in our fish banks and then turn them in hopefully today because they're supposed to be turned in? Right. Could we walk with Jesus as we share the good news of the, the Bible and the things we learn in Sunday school? Could we walk with Jesus and love every other person we see, not just our brothers and sisters, but everybody we find? Yeah, good. Let's have a prayer about this. Dear God, thank you for magic tricks. 
and for an empty tomb. We know this was not magic, but your amazing love. Help us walk with you and share your love every day of our lives. Amen. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes, clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord.
Amen. Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. Will you pray with me, friends? Eternal and loving God, may your word find a place in our minds and a home in our hearts. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you this morning, this beautiful Easter Sunday, what is the hardest commandment to follow? What's the most difficult one? Think about that for a minute. Think back through all the commandments that you know about in the Bible, the ones I'm sure you know, probably the Big Ten come to mind, first Big Ten. No stealing, no lying, no killing, honor your parents. Well, that's an easy one, right? Actually, I think my mom and dad are watching. That's an easy one. <laughs> hey, happy Easter. <laughs> the Ten Commandments get a little more difficult to follow, though, when Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, deepened their meaning for us to say that holding on to anger against someone is the same as murder. Hmm. Because Jesus knew that every outward deed starts with an inward thought. And that while you might never take physical action, anger against someone dehumanizes them and murders part of their humanity. Think about that one in the context of Holy Week. The crucifixion didn't start with physical violence, it didn't start there. It started with anger and frustration and fear and a really awful social system that condoned killing. So we're commanded to watch what's going on in our heads and in our hearts and in our systems, and that's a tough commandment to follow. How about this one? Love your enemy. Oh. From Luke 6, Sermon on the Plain, also Matthew 5, Sermon on the Mount, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Dang. <laughs> it's just got so much easier to go the other way, really. I wonder how much love for their enemies the Marys had when they were visiting the tomb that first Easter morning. Were they praying for Pilate and for the Romans? Were they blessing, blessing and not cursing the chief priests in the Sanhedrin? Love your enemy has got to be, got to be one of the hardest commandments to follow. Or how about the commandment that we celebrated on Thursday? Maundy Thursday, Mondatum Thursday, Mondatum, Mondatum being Latin for commandment, that's where it comes from. You learned something today if you came to church, yeah? The commandment that Jesus left his disciples with on that night, love one another as I have loved you. How can I possibly love as Jesus has loved me? That's got to be a tough commandment to follow. These are all difficult commandments to follow, and, and each one is really a sermon on its own. Each one is a lifelong effort to live God's goodness and God's grace. But I don't even think those are the hardest. I think the hardest one is the one that we hear this morning on this beautiful Easter morning. We hear it a few times. We hear it from an angel, and then we hear it from the resurrected Christ himself. What do we hear? First thing the angel says, be not afraid. Be not afraid. In other translations, don't be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. <laughs> What? <laughs> that is a tough order to follow. Are you kidding me? Think about this. This commandment comes to these ladies first, right? It comes to these ladies and through them to us. But these poor ladies, in what was probably the worst week of their lives, they watched their master go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all the earthly powers that be. The officials at the temple, the, the crowds baying for blood, the Roman Empire... And for all they knew on that morning, he had lost. For all they knew. 
The other men in their lives were hiding or running scared. One of them, Judas, had killed himself after betraying them. I think they themselves were summoning a huge amount of courage. It was an act of bravery just making that trip to Jesus' tomb to attend to the, the funerary requirements of their faith, being out in public, walking in that space, knowing that there really might be centurions guarding the tomb. They were in the middle of all of that and being incredibly brave already. And then Matthew tells us there was an earthquake. Who here has been in an earthquake? Anybody? A couple of you. Okay. Well, God bless you. <laughs> I haven't. At least not that I ever noticed. And, and I hope I never am. But that's got to be scary on top of everything else. How many here have seen an angel? I, yeah. <laughs> I think I have, actually. I will testify, I think I have seen an angel. And it was scary. And then it was comforting and nice. But first it was scary. And this whole thing was so scary that even the soldiers standing guard completely froze up. Fight or flight, and these guys went freeze. Because what was happening was so big. Bigger even than Rome. These battle-hardened guys in the graveyard in a Roman outpost, they froze. It was so frightening, and, and the angel's words were, be not afraid. To follow that commandment, I don't know if I could in the moment. Now, I know that fear can serve a purpose, right? Fear can keep us safe. Fear can keep us sane. Fear can keep us healthy. But it can also hold us back. Today, we're talking about intentional, authentic evangelism. And for us mainline Protestant folks, that in itself can be scary. <laughs> that can be scary. Evangelism, that, that's, that's for those people, other people. You know? the, the ones who are mean and righteous, the, the ones yelling at people on corners, whatever, the ones who make threats of hell if you don't believe like they believe. But intentional, authentic evangelism is something different. It is knowing that my relationship with God has changed my life in fundamental ways. It's healed some broken parts of me. It's living my faith first because before I even open my mouth to talk about it, it's living it here. It's being so full of good things, the good things that God has put in me that they just spill out everywhere. And I don't spend the time or the energy on being afraid about it. How can I? It's just too good. There's a story that I love and it came from a uh, new pastor um, tent maker. You know, it's a person who comes into a neighborhood where there isn't a church and sees uh, if the community is interested in a church. He spoke at a presbytery meeting I attended once. He was telling me about how he was out in the neighborhood just, just meeting people, introducing himself, and he came across a group of young kids and they were playing and he got to talking with them and he joined in their game and they told him that they were excited because they knew that the ice cream man was coming. Yay. They were waiting for the ice cream man to come. They were going on about how good this ice cream was and how excited they were as they waited. And before long, the song of the ice cream truck was heard down the block. It was coming up the street. All the kids' ears perked up and they all ran out to the corner, and the new pastor went with them, catching the kids' excitement. He was getting excited, too. And when the truck stopped, one kid approached the truck and bought one cone of ice cream. One. And he brought it all back for them to share. He watched each kid take a happy, joyful lick and pass it to the next one. Pass it to the next one. Pass it to the next one. And eventually the cone got around to him. <laughs> yeah. 
This was before COVID, okay? <laughs> but he was still aware of, of health safety, and this wasn't so hygienic. But the excitement and the exuberance won out. Four kids sharing one cone, and they were thoughtful enough to share it with him. They were thoughtful enough to pass it his way because it was just too good for them not to share it. They had to let the guy know how good it was. So he tasted and he saw and it was good. In fact, he said, despite a healthy fear of germs, because of those kids and because of their invitation, it was the best dang ice cream he had ever eaten. That was his story of evangelism. Authentic, intentional evangelism. Things too good not to share. Each of us has a story of faith, what our relationship with holy things God, Christ, the Spirit, however you name it, however you experience it, but you have a story of what that means in your life. I suspect we might not be here if that weren't true. I suspect we wouldn't be here if we didn't recognize these things as good. So what's your faith story? Where has your relationship with God changed your life? Has fear ever stopped you from sharing it or from living it? If so, I can say that that does happen in this world and God forgives us for it. Even the Marys weren't quite able to let go of their fear completely. After the angel, they were running to tell the other disciples what they had seen with fear and great joy, the scripture tells us. Jesus stood right in front of them at that moment with another reminder, do not be afraid. See, the truth of living is that we really don't need to work too hard to imagine a situation that scares us. Some of us know fear only too well. Living itself in this society seems to inspire a generalized anxiety disorder to the point that fear and anxiety can almost be arm-in-arm -arm companions as we walk through this life. We can be afraid of things real. We can be afraid of things imagined. And that can become a problem when we let it lead. Fear and anxiety will take us down some very dark paths if we let them. They'll have us huddle. They'll have us paralyzed. They'll have us jumping through hoops and justifications as we follow their lead into breaking all those other commandments that I mentioned. They'll compound on one another until we fear everyone and everything around us until we are unable to share. They will lead us to distrust and fear and anxiety as Holy Week shows lead us to violence and lead us to hate. The good news is on the other side of that. I don't think that it's a mistake that some scholars note that there are over 365 ways that scripture conveys the commandment against fear, fear not, be not afraid, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, Christ said, believe also in me. Sure, sometimes fear can be healthy, but the message of Easter is that we can't let fear lead. There's too much good in this love not to share it in all that we do. We strive to let love lead. It was fear that put Jesus in the tomb. It was love that has that tomb empty today. So let's find the places in our lives where we can let love lead just a little bit more, where we might be more aware of the places where we can let the Spirit guide us, where we can move from fear to great joy, just having it spill over and go everywhere as we share our faith. Let us seek to follow the commandment offered to us this Easter Sunday and every day. Be not afraid. And then let us be generous enough with a hungry world.
to share what's tasty. Love and grace, courage and comfort be with you this Easter morning in all things. God is love. May it be so in the name of our risen Christ. Alleluia and amen. We have a part to play in God's holy word. Sharing the real story of our lives have changed. Called in spirit and thankful for our role, let us bring our tips and offerings to the table. Let us bring our gifts before God. together in our prayer dedication. O oh God, you share your love with all who believe in your name. On this holy day, receive our offerings as an affirmation that we are your faithful disciples. Strengthen our ability to share your good news. 
We pray in the name of the resurrected one, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Thank you. There is a typo in the bulletin, um, but our next hymn is number 246. How many ways can we share hallelujah? When the bread is divided, hallelujah. When the table is set, hallelujah. When the hungry are fed and peace is celebrated, hallelujah. When communities are brought together, hallelujah. When neighbors love each other, hallelujah. Hallelujah is not just a word, it's a way of living. This table is a table of welcome. It is an open communion and all are welcome here. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Please be seated. Let us pray. When everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love broke through, Lord. Your love was too strong, too wide, and too deep for death to hold. The sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth past our fears, shining with resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope, and joy will live in us each day, a fearless confidence in your love that lights the way for all people. Lord, we ask that you be with those in hurting bodies or in hurting minds today, 
relieve all suffering, send hope and comfort, and continue the healing work of Christ in our midst. We ask to know him better as the Spirit moves and joins us. Join our hearts now as we join our voices, singing the song, singing the prayer that Jesus taught us, singing together. On the night that the people were led by fear, Jesus nevertheless sat with his beloved. And he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it saying, this bread is my body broken for you, take and eat in remembrance of me. And though he knew that love would not win that night, he did know that love would win eventually. And so he took the cup and he poured it out, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat this bread or drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. We seek you at this table, Lord. Be known in this bread and this cup. Send your spirit upon us and upon these elements that they might be our strength and reminders of the holiness that moves in us and through us and into the world. Strengthen us to be your body. Fill us to overflowing with the good news of life. In Jesus' name, amen. I have communion servers. Friends, this is the feast of God for the people of God. Come for all things already.
Let us pray together our prayer of thanksgiving. Holy God, here at this table, your promise of life is made tangible in Christ. You have offered us newness, grace, and hope. Together, by your grace, we accept the life you offer. Together, in gratitude, we will live the resurrection and share the good news it brings. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please rise and join in our closing hymn number 157, I Danced in the Morning. into the world as the people of God in this place, and may the God who raised Jesus from the dead grant you grace. May the Son who gave his life for you give you peace, and the Spirit who is with you day by day inspire you to share the good news of living grace. Christ is alive. Hallelujah and amen. All who have sung the Hallelujah Chorus are invited. We have books here. Please join us or stay in your pews and enjoy the sounds you're about to hear. Got <laughs> 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 Colleen. <laughs> 